Hey everyone, uh, my name is Sam. My pronouns are they, them, and theirs, and I am the Member Experience Manager at Advent Coworking. I want to thank you for joining us for today for Advent Member Talks. Uh, this weekly event features a different member on the topic of their choosing, and it gives our members an opportunity to share their skills and experience not only with fellow members, but with the greater Charlotte community. Um, so I'm excited that today we are joined by Eric, um, who's the Executive Director of Trips for Kids Charlotte. Um, he's going to be talking about identifying the need um, for diversity in the cycling and recreational industry. Um, so if you have any, you know, questions for Eric, let us know. Um, um, or if you're watching this later, um, Eric will share his like contact information so you can get in touch as well. Um, but I will hand it over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, like Sam said, uh, my name's Eric. I'm the executive director of Trips for Kids Charlotte. Uh, Trips for Kids Charlotte is a nonprofit organization that focuses on empowering underserved youth through, uh, through transformative bicycle programming, as well as supporting access to bicycles and bicycle knowledge for the greater Charlotte community. Today, the topic I'm going to talk about focuses on identifying the need for diversity uh, in the recreation industry and primarily um, the cycling industry here in Charlotte and much of the United States. Um, I'm gonna start off by saying, please let me preface that I am listening, I am learning, and I, I will be talking about the observations um, within the industry, my, my own personal observations within the industry and how I believe our organization can begin to address and support inclusivity and equity uh, for the future of the cycling industry. I'm always open to hearing the responses from others uh, who can help guide my personal growth as well as the growth of our organization. Uh, so I'll start with just a little bit about myself. As I said, my name is Eric, I've worked in and around the cycling industry for nearly a decade at this point. Um, I've worked in retail shops, um, both big box and small shops, uh, but I've spent most of my time working within um, bicycle nonprofits. Um, prior to Trips for Kids Charlotte, uh, I worked with an organization called Bikes Not Bombs. Their mission simply focused on using the bicycle as a tool for social change. And they primarily worked within the underserved neighborhoods of Roxbury and Dorchester in the Boston area. They use bicycle, uh, they use the bicycle to kind of teach skills, uh, create confidence and empower youth to uh, use the bicycle as transportation. And that led to a lot more, you know, it, it led to you know, having ownership of, of the bicycle really can, can help you grow in the confidence of, of pursuing other opportunities uh, and pursuing other access and, and breaking down some of those boundaries that, you know, without, without the ability to transport yourself uh, that, that you might have. Um, if you really think back to being a kid, um, a lot of us had the experience of of getting on the bicycle and that being the first uh, taste of independence, right? You didn't have to rely on mom, dad, or you didn't rely on the busing system or, or whatever, uh, but you could ride to your friend's house. Uh, you could ride to a place that made you feel good. Uh, you could ride to, you know, a shop to kind of get a snack. Uh, so that's, that's what Bikes Not Bombs focused it on, focused on. Um, so for me, I was raised uh, in, in the kind of exception in the bicycle industry. You know, our shop consisted of a more equal representation, both in gender and race. And we focus more on the benefits of cycling as a part of a daily routine, uh, a meditation, um, something that led you know, to a calmness and confidence uh, within the day. So in 2016, I moved back to Charlotte 
in search of a similar environment. And what I found, you know, was an overall lack of diversity throughout the local industry. Um, it seemed that most shops featured a certain gender um, with a certain skin color uh, to cater to the same. Um, in reflecting on why that might be, I found that it might be a byproduct of the history of cycling in Charlotte and what people mostly saw cycling in Charlotte as. Um, at the time, the majority of cyclists, uh, and, and this, is, this is maybe a little bit earlier than 2016, uh, you know, through the earlier part of the 2010s. Um, at the time, the majority of cyclists were, were either elite cyclists, recreational cyclists, uh, or those who relied on cycling as transportation, mostly in the realm of, you know, budget transportation or um, you know, getting around school, but not so much like, this is my transportation to the city, this is my connection. Um, and a few, you know, caught on to the fact that cycling could be more than, than that and, you know, uh, cater more to an overall uh, populace rather than just one demographic. So when I kind of thought back, um, what, what was Charlotte like and why, why would we have this kind of idea um, that, you know, there's, it, it's for a certain group demographic. Uh, throughout the 90s and 2000s, Ask Around and Cycling was about speed, performance, Tour de France, uh, elite kind of stuff, money kind of stuff, uh, which catered to those who had privilege. So the, the representation that you saw in the industry, I mean, you know, was more in the realm of that. Who are the people uh, that would purchase these high dollar bikes? Who are the people who would consider recreation, uh, bicycling as a recreation? Um, so you saw a lot of imagery, a lot of conversation about this thing, that thing, uh, the best thing, and that still kind of exists to some degree. Um, Charlotte was not connected enough or large enough to even consider cycling uh, for commuting. Um, having attended Charlotte, uh, UNC Charlotte in the early 2000s, I found that diehards were the only ones to take to the streets. I remember, um, you know, the one, the one ride that everyone did was from UNCC to downtown and just hustling down um, Tryon. Um, but, you know, that in itself, you know, the city back then uh, had its barriers to transportation, which it still has now. Um, but now, you know, in the past few couple months, actually, and due to the pandemic, we're seeing the largest bike boom potentially in history. And what does that mean? Well, that means that it's more than just performance cyclists taking to the streets, taking to the trails, or discovering the benefits of cycling. It's more than one group. Um, so, you know, cycling can be, can be exercising, can be transportation, can be therapy even. Um, and so within that, that boom, there's a diverse population with a diverse background um, that is, you know, both on the socioeconomic side, uh, the color of skin uh, and where they're from. Uh, but you don't see that same represent representation in the shops uh, surrounding them, you know, um, or the language or the imagery of the sport. Um, or even leadership within the sport. So, you know, you can kind of um, get that that it's it's more for one part, um, and that's slowly changing, uh, definitely. Um, so, how how can this be addressed? The answer is that it has to come from within everyone involved. Uh, 
in the cycling community and questioning the image of cycling uh, here in Charlotte uh, is, is the way that we can address that. So those, uh, so it starts with, with the community. You know, what we want to do is, is be observant. Do we see the diversity in the groups that you ride with? Um, if not, what, why is that? Understand the biases within your group and within yourself uh, and, and think about that. Um, be open to, to being uncomfortable. Be open to understanding why, why there isn't a representation. And consider, do others feel comfortable approaching your group uh, or you as a cyclist? You know, you want to be kind of like an ambassador. Recognize that not everyone is starting from the same place. Uh, give opportunity and support for the, the greater growth of the cycling community. So how can, how can you help change the image? How can you uh, connect with people? And I think overall that will help grow uh, not only the community, but yourself. Um, Church for Kids Charlotte focuses on providing a pathway and an access to opportunities. So in 2021, as part of, you know, attempting to, or starting, starting to address change, uh, we're going to be launching a part, uh, pilot internship program that works with those not represented in the bicycle industry to become employees, investors, and leaders of diversity. We are creating a curriculum that will empower participants with the know-how and the, necess the necessary skill to enter cycling, the cycling workforce. And we will work with shops and organizations to find out how, what are, why have there been, um, you know, barriers uh, for, for people from different backgrounds entering in there, into the industry. And, uh, you know, the response may be that there's not a pool of, of individuals not represented um, to choose from. You know, how can we seek them out? And, you know, through this program, how can, how can we empower them to take part in the industry? Um, and I, I believe with that, you know, um, making moves to kind of address gaps that you see in the industry and gaps that you see in your groups will strengthen the overall uh, cycling community. And hopefully in Charlotte, we will see those shops where we are seeing um, individuals um, that are equally represented. Um, that's all I have uh, for that part. And I really was hoping to, to catch a couple of the questions there um, to see if there were any connections that I could make there. Yeah, for sure. Um, I have some questions. Sure. Um, so first off, in regards to just kind of the, the last bit you were saying, um, are there any bike shops or bike groups um, in the Charlotte area that are identifying this need for diversity um, and working on it or already there? Yeah, I mean, so there there has always been with, with cycling groups, there's been a fracture of cycling groups that um, that are mostly white, and then cycling groups that are mostly back, black. Uh, a friend of mine, Kenny Templeton, uh, brought up the, the question, like, why is there a need for separate black cycling groups to exist? And part of that is that um, some people don't feel comfortable. You know, you don't feel comfortable integrating in groups. Um, and that that is a problem because it's like, it's it's, a base idea that, oh, this is, this is who I ride with. This is who I've always ridden with. And why is that? You know, I mean, if you look at Charlotte, it's a really diverse uh, population. And a lot, of, a lot of people are getting on bikes and riding. Um, and, you know, it would be great at some point to, to open that up and, and realize that and see, see groups that are equally represented 
and see um, people riding together. Um, as far as shops, I think it's, it's also changing. And I think that's where the basis of our internship is. Um, a lot of the times when you're, when you're coming into the industry, especially if you're coming in uh, at peak times, um, you have to have something that stands out. It stands out um, as a reason for that employer to hire you. So the idea with the, the internship is that we work with shops to understand what that need is. And then we work with um, the youth and participants to teach those specific needs. So it makes them, it gives them the opportunity to, to market themselves as having more than, you know, the average kid. You know, when you're coming at, when you're coming in at 15 years old, uh, you can either take a job doing retail or, or whatever, um, which isn't specific to anything, or you could come into the, the workforce with skills. Um, and the idea is to very much like in the work that we did with bikes and bikes, not bombs is create that pool that later on can be investors. They can be um, representatives and they can be leaders within the industry. So slowly how, how that, representation and image of cycling can change. Cause I mean, we work with, with um, youth through our uh, earn a bike programs and our ride programs. And, you know, it's great that we can give those transformative opportunities, but to have a role model, you know, I'm sure like in the nineties, you know, live strong guy, I forget what his name is. <laughs> um, Lance Armstrong, you know, lots of, Lots of dudes were like, oh, I want to be Lance Armstrong. But to have representation for these kids who are 10 years old, 15 years old, to look up to like, hey, I want to be like that guy. I want to be like that woman. I want to be, you know, a representative in this industry. And then make that change. Because it's, it's harder to force like a change currently, but it, you can empower the youth of today uh, to be those leaders of tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I love that answer. Um, and, <laughs> you know, one thing that we know, at least here in Charlotte, is like, this is a very segregated city, you know, and that's been intentionally created through redlining, um, you know, through the continuation of gentrification of Black neighborhoods, um, you know, the destruction of neighborhoods for new highways and, you know, so many different different ways that racism is sh showing up in our like transportation and access system. Um, are you seeing like anything that the city is doing to better provide access for cyclists across all of Charlotte? I know there are a ton of bike trails, um, yeah. but I don't know, you know, where all of them are. I'm curious if, you know, there's a lot of them mostly in like white or, you know, upper class neighborhoods or if they're pretty spread out throughout Charlotte? I mean, as far as the city goes and, and their actions, they are in many ways, like over, over the past year, two years or three years versus like maybe the past 20 years. I mean, there's definitely been an upsurge on creating access. Uh, if you think of transportation and you ask any organization and you ask, you know, youth organization or or anyone who's a worker that, um, you know, is trying to get to work, right? Uh, transportation is one of the biggest problems. And it is, it is a difficult one because you either have to have a car to, to span some gaps. Uh, you have to have money for a daily trip on the train or the bus. Um, and, you know, that adds up. Like, how can you have economic mobility if you're constantly paying into just being able to get to get access to opportunity. So I feel like the bicycle in many ways is, is a tool that provides that access. I mean, if you have the ability to ride to work, it costs you nothing. You got some time away from everything. You could zone out of the computer and you got some exercise all in one. It's like amazing. Um, so I think the, the government in the city is, is really 
starting to see some of those benefits. Um, and I think on their, it's, it's to their benefit really to address that in the way that, um, you know, paying, paying for roads, paying for transportation infrastructure, um, or paying for more, you know, train lines and stuff like that, that can get costly. And, and you're still going to run into the jam of people trying to do that. I mean, 50 people in cars is a, a lot bigger than 50 people on bikes. And so if you want to address transportation, and one of, you know, the city is becoming much more, in many ways, accessible. The roads are getting a little bit better. Greenways are popping up. So there are ways that you can connect and, and helping, um, you know, helping communities that have never thought of cycling as, as an opportunity for transportation, showing them and educating them those avenues that exist, um, you know, can help, help those communities. And also um, just help the connectivity. Like there are neighborhoods like Gur Heights um, on both sides, they can't, they can't literally bike just over a bridge. Um, when they come down on Monroe, I think Randolph, it's like the fastest section in a curve. Um, and that's, that's crazy. And so that means all they have is a car because the busing line, you know, it's a give or take. Um, so having, having more accessibility and, and for the city to kind of put forth for that um, will go a long ways for, for, for the access of everyone. Um, and I hope they continue. I hope they continue and I hope they put bike lanes in the right places. <laughs> um, Are you but, calling out Plaza Midwood's bike lane? <laughs> I'm not saying anything, <laughs> but um, no, I mean, no, and uh, that's one of the great things about uh, people getting on bikes right now is that they are, they are starting to see that Charlotte is really small, you know, connectivity is, is possible on, on, you know, pedals or riding your bike. So, you know, voice out to your government and say, or voice out to the city and say, hey, I need just this sliver of greenway, which makes my commute so much better. Um, or if you get somewhere and you're like, I have nowhere to park my bike, voice out to the city. I mean, more of that more of voicing out to the city of what needs um, are there for bicycle transportation. Um, we'll go further to, to support the, the access. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as a Charlotte public transportation user by choice, like if anyone watching this can influence the city in any way, please step up our game y'all like we can have better better public transportation like reliable public transportation it should not take me an hour to go six miles yeah. that's all i say <laughs> uh, but i am you know shout out to like pam with the charlotte spokespeople who has you know loans all of these bikes to have been co-working for our bike exchange program and you know to you eric for fixing those up and maintaining them um i have my bike right next to me so it's to your point, it, it's great to wake up in the morning and I'm working remotely most of the time, but to have the ability and the access to, you know, ride my bike to work in the morning, you know, and to know that there's neighborhood paths that I can take. Again, thank you to Pam for creating a whole route for me. Um, <laughs> but there is a need for more bike lanes, you know, it would be a lot faster if I could bike down the plaza or down central, but like I would, Parts of the central have a bike lane, I know, but like I would never, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit scary. Anyways, um, so I definitely agree that we, we need more access and, and more work to become a, a safer city for biking. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go soon. But one other thing is, you know, as you mentioned, or at least my experience, and I haven't been in like recreational cycling for that long, um, but when I have gone on a few rides, you know, there are a lot of white men. Um, it's the majority of, of white men in those spaces. And, you know, have, I guess my question is, have you ever seen like these folks like do anything that you think you'd like to see more people do? You know, like 
have you ever had an experience where like a man or a white person has purposely like intentionally done things to like create more inclusivity that you think people should like replicate and do more of? I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily, necessarily know if there's one instance that I can pull up right now but I think you know what it what it is is really the change will come with a lot of people addressing you know what their privilege is I'm part of that group uh, even just being a male you know it's a lot more easy and it's a lot more accessible for me to to get into cycling and and mechanics or whatnot but it's it's not that easy for everyone. I mean, this isn't you you have, as a cyclist and part of the community, like you have to understand that not everyone comes from this the same base, right? So people are coming from different parts and you know, for women it, it there's this there's a section there's an area that they're coming from, people of color that they're coming from. But we're not all starting from the baseline. So Definitely, I think when it comes to to addressing that privilege, I mean, first thing is be mindful of it, you know, uh, understand and try to like test yourself, observe, listen, um, and then address the things that you can see within yourself. If you can't see within yourself, then maybe that's a bigger issue, but you know, I think, I think that's where it starts. Just ask the question um, and ask, how can I share what I have? Um, ultimately, the change that's, that's going to happen or the change that you'll see in representation comes from not one person, but everyone being mindful of who they hang out with, um, including everyone, including being open to riding with more than just who they normally ride with um, and being open to sharing what they have. Not like things, but like concepts and ideas and being open to hearing different perspectives. Um, again, I'm still learning, but I find the most that I can learn is by listening and observing and less of, you know, acting in the way like you're not, you haven't thought about, right? So it starts with listening, observing, identifying the need, and then going from there. Absolutely. And I love that one phrase you just said of, you know, how can I share what I have? Mm -hmm. You know, because we all have our own different privileges and we all have access to things and if we recognize those items that we have access to and that we can share, that's how we take care of each other as a community. And that's how we start leveling out and actually fixing, you know, the starting place for everyone to be more equitable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, Eric. If folks want to learn more about the work that you do or want to support Troops for Kids, how can they do that? Yeah. Definitely. So you can contact me directly. My name uh, is Eric, but <laughs> my email address is Eric S. So it's E R I C S and Sam at tripsforkidscharlotte.org. Uh, you can also visit our website, tripsforkidscharlotte.org, uh, and see about the programs that we're doing, uh, the curriculums, uh, and the, the educational tools that we're putting out. Um, our tag on Instagram is at Charlotte Recyclery. Uh, we have some great bike tips on there for first time cyclists. Um, things that cyclists who, seasoned cyclists would not think twice about, but they're real life um, kind of tips and tricks. Uh, Charlotte Cadu, our, our program director is amazing at, at uh, pulling that off. Uh, and yeah, come ask us questions and educate yourself. Uh, and weeklyrides.com uh, is, is a great resource to kind of see rides or see what's happening in there. I know Jeff is, is one of those that, um, you know, caters a lot to 
the sports cyclist, but he does try to, to get as many, um, as much content as he can for, for other rides and opportunities uh, to connect as a cycling community. Um, and so I appreciate uh, the work that he's doing there too. And yeah, if you need a bike, if you're interested in it, just, just come visit us um, over at the Charlotte Recyclery. Awesome. And I will share all of the like links and email that Eric just mentioned in the description um, when I post this to our YouTube channel, Advent Coworking Videos. Um, but thank you again to everyone who's watched today. And thank you, Eric. Um, I hope you'll join us next week and have a great evening.